Hi, this is the bad boy, Joey Janela, and you're listening to the Going In Raw podcast. Joey Janela always goes in. This is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Going In Raw. Hey everyone, Kenny Omega here. In case you didn't know, we have an awesome kick butt show called Stephen Larson's Going In Raw, and they're going to be supporting AEW every week amongst many other things. Goodbye and smooch. Good night. Bye bang. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson and available every, anywhere, every, all the places that podcasts are available as well. We film it live at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. That's what I get for trying to do several things at the same time. I'm trying to load up our new patrons. We got a couple of new patrons. Uh, Domaniac, John Ingalls, and uh, Dal. Thank you, Dal. And thank you, Domaniac, thank you. John thank Ingalls. You. So thank you, thank uh, you. over there on the Patreon, you can get access to Friendo Club TV, uh, which is our bonus content. And uh, today on uh, Friendo Club TV, we talked about the whole uh, COVID mania running wild all over WWE, man. And to a degree, I guess, AEW as well. They're a... Uh, 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 AEW champion could not be in attendance tonight because of his potential contact with potentially somebody who potentially had COVID of some sort. Um, mm-hmm. And so, uh, but then over there in WWE, it's like scores. Oh man, it's it, scores. It's barely a, a major, a huge issue. They are swimming in it and, over and, there. And the, the sad part of it, they're not going to change a thing. <laughs> You're probably right about that. Bathing in coronavirus. Over there in WWE, I'm Not sure we'll have... Not enough of them to stop production. I'm sure we'll have a news brief on that tomorrow. We are just sort of... We were, pl- we were maybe thinking about doing one today, but... Uh, it seemed like every few minutes something new would come about. Yeah. Uh, I kind of half expect something else to drop in the morning. Yeah, I know. I do, I do, too. But I do, too. It's called the, in the news business a developing story. It is definitely a developing story. Uh, so, uh, But yeah, we talked about that today on Friendo Club TV. And uh, and it's a bonus uh, content that we have. You can get there. Drop us a Twitch sub. You get access to it. Uh, Five dollars and up a month on the Patreon. You have access to it. And of course, uh, YouTube channel members get access to it as well. Uh, so there you go. Audio uh, uh, in the audio land. Uh, I still I put up the episode sometime. I've been like late with the audio episodes lately. I need to get back on that. Uh, so yeah, anyways, but if you're an audio, if you're listening to us in the audio realm, you can have it sent straight to your RSS feed via the Patreon, along with ad free episodes of going in raw. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. so AEW, uh, go home show to fighter fest. And mm-hmm. they gave orange Cassidy his moment against Chris Jericho because indeed, obviously this is a match that is really meant to, uh, spotlight orange Cassidy. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, Chris Jericho is Chris Jericho. Uh, Judas oh, he'll effect. win. A Judas effect is going to put down Orange Cassidy. This, this, should, this, this should be a fun this, match, though. It should be. This is a way to add some dimension to Orange Cassidy. Yeah. Uh, yet again, to show he's just not the slacker guy. Yeah. Uh, there's intensity. There's competitive spirit within him. He's more than just to do the sticks his hands in his pockets. And I mm-hmm. thought I think AEW uh, during uh, his tenure there, they've done a pretty good job of of yeah. He's a pretty chill dude, but push comes to shove, he'll beat you up. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. No, and that's that's obviously where they went tonight to show that because Jericho essentially called him a one note joke and uh, yeah. and an annoying stale act. And uh, instead of Orange Cassidy uh, going through his entire routine, uh, we saw another side to him, one we don't see very often, which was just pure intensity. Uh, at some point, he got busted open in the ear and that was yeah. coming down pretty hard. Uh, yeah. and he laid out Jericho and, and had a great moment there at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Pretty much. I, I would imagine pretty much all the rest of the fighter fest matches were made official tonight as well. That's looking yeah. to be a, a pretty cool two night event. Yeah. I was, I was actually pretty surprised and, and honestly pretty uh, excited. They announced the cards for both shows. I guess while we're talking about them, I'll also just talk about it. Okay. So night one is as follows. You got Jurassic Express versus MJF and Wardlow. That's about that was made during the show tonight. Mm-hmm. Santana and Ortiz versus Private Party. Matt Hardy will be joining Private Party uh, at ringside. You got Hikaru Shida versus Penelope Ford for the women's title. They had a great brawl tonight. 
uh, Jake Hager versus Cody. They had kind of an interesting press conference type thing. I'm still not exactly sure what to think of that. That'll be fun and, to talk about. And then uh, tag titles, uh, Kenny and Hangman Page taking on best friends. Night two, we got Lance Archer versus Joey Janela, another match that was set up tonight. Uh, Nyla Rose will be in action, and they tease some sort of announcement or something from her. Yeah. What was what was the exact wording on that one? I forget. It was because it, it said she's in either. action, right? Like she's gonna. Yeah, be but fighting. then the commentary said something about her having a surprise or something. Yeah, like right. Um, SCU, all three members taking on Brody Lee, Colt Cabana, and Stu Grayson. Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho. Uh, eight man tag match: Butcher and Blade and Lucha Brothers, who returned tonight, taking on the Young Bucks and FTR, and then. For the AEW Championship, John Moxley versus Brian Cage. So, if our Twitch chat is to be believed, did you see this already? Mm. Renee, uh, Renee Young, uh, tweeting out that she has been diagnosed with COVID. Oh, which obviously explains uh, what happened there with AEW. Because yeah. you know there is always the speculation. Well, you know, so now WWE's in con- incompetence. I was going to say incompetence. Incompetence. It's it's reaching into the realm of AEW, man, via marriage. That's rough. That's really rough. Well, that that's got the potential of putting that title about on uh, July eighth, um, in jeopardy. Yeah, it does. It yeah. I mean, we're a week away, and to well, two weeks. It's the eighth. It'd be the eighth. We're two weeks. Oh, out. that's on night two. Okay, well, yeah. A fourteen day quarantine is between now and then. Yeah, but if he. You know, if he catches it, oh, because, sorry. he's 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 not gonna. There's gonna be no title <laughs> For match. Sure. No, you know? there won't be a title match so. if he actually has it. Oh man, I mean, I would have thought, I would have, yeah, boy. I mean, he's. I don't know how long those tests take these days, but I'm sure he's been tested at this point. And, like, and the tweet they sent out today, um, I believe it was a situation where. He thought he'd been, by that point, exposed secondhand. That's what the tweet said. And that he was going to stay home on the doctor's advice and be tested himself, I believe. But okay. the situation, depending, assuming he's been exposed, assuming uh, uh, all that, there's a 14-day incub- incubation period. So yeah. um, if you test him tomorrow, you test negative. That, that, that's Apparently, that was one of the situations uh, WB ran to. I can't remember who it was, whether it was, it was Tom Colohue or somebody else about uh, you know, some people tested, tested negative, only sub- subsequently you can te- be tested again positive because it's mm-hmm. such a long incubation period. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, let's just, uh, I mean, I'm sure we'll have all that stuff tomorrow. Um, yeah. But that is, uh, yeah, that's something else right there. That is something else. Uh, so I <laughs> kicked off. What a freaking world. Uh, so kicked off with a really fun match between Wardlow. Oh, yeah, that was a blast. And Luchasaurus. Uh, of course, this was a lumberjack match, and the best friends took it a bit on the literal side, dressing up as actual lumberjacks. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Were there any uh, were there heels around the uh, the ring? Because I saw at one point, yes. yeah, there were heels. Because at one point, Wardlow got out of the ring, and they Luchasaurus started... got sent to the opposite side of the ring, and the heels beat him up. Oh, was that Luchasaurus that that happened? Because Luchasaurus yeah, at first yeah, yeah. went out, and the heels helped him back. I'm sorry, the faces helped him back up. And on the other side was the heels, and he got sent out there. Okay, yeah. I don't know if that was Wardlow or him. So just to confirm, yes, Tom Collar, who just, I was correct, is apparently as part of the most recent coronavirus test, their WB employees testing positive who tested negative last week. So I just want to make sure that is sourced correctly. Oosh. Golly. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. Uh, so the Lumberjacks definitely were felt. Uh, at one point, uh, when Wardlow was on the outside, little Marco Stunt was trying to mess with him. Eventually, they get up to the stage area. Oh, man, this whole part was great. And uh, that stuff was a lot of fun. Why don't you take us through that? Because, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So, so Wardlow, power, so they, yeah, Wardlow power slams Luchasaurus on the stage. And then uh, mm, Jungle yeah. Boy is up there. He checks on Luchasaurus. And the Wardlow just grabs him, tosses him off. All the heel lumberjacks are down there beating him up on the floor. And then Marco... So we get a shot on the floor. So Marco jumps in from screen right, yeah, from the right side of the screen, and does like a tope or something. Does like a full flip in the air, take them out, try to make the save. Meanwhile, Wardlow and Luchasaurus they're brawling up the stage. Brandon Cutler, who I guess is one of the lumberjacks, he tries to get involved to get the competitors back down towards the ring where they're supposed to be. 
yeah, he gets tossed off the stage onto the Lumberjacks. And then Marco goes after Wardlow. Wardlow press slams him Man. and just chucks him. He went so chucks high him. up in the air. That was great. I'm glad that he did that as opposed to like what uh, Archer did, where he like basically tried to throw like a freaking uh, <laughs> a basketball yeah. pass yeah. At, yeah, uh, no. at the crowd there. But he, he sort of chucked him up high. And yeah. then, of course, that distraction was enough. Uh, he turns around. Luchasaurus gives him the uh, th- he has a name for that, right? The spinning tail whip. Thing. The tail whip. Tail yeah. whip. So he gives him a tail whip. He falls off into the crowd, and then Luchasaurus comes to the to the edge of the stage. He does a shooting star press. Uh, oh man! Off the stage, it looked. <laughs> I was like, "Is this dude gonna try this right now?" He did. He hit it. It was great. It was really cool. It was fantastic. Everybody did a good job catching people. Uh, yes. Back in the ring, though, uh, Luchasaurus, did he hit another uh, tail whip? He hit, he hit a tail whip and another kick, yeah, and then a choke Okay, slam. yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. And then he goes for the pin, but MJF distracts the ref. He then, MJF gets speared by Jungle Boy, uh, which, of course, uh, then allows Wardlow get the advantage, F10. Is that what he's still calling it, F10? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. F10 in the win. And really there's a match. big brawl between everybody, and that's when oh, they man, announce. That's when they announce Tony Khan has decided. And I like that they're referencing that now. They're referencing that Tony Khan is in charge, Larson. He is the matchmaker. Yeah, so we've got There's that a couple other cool spots. Match. You saw Wardlow do a, a, a Rana during the match. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Luchasaurus hits a Spanish fly. It was pretty great. Yeah, good stuff. The match was a ton of fun. After uh, that, afterwards. we had some Taz lessons. Here's some lessons with Taz. Look at Brian Cage. Ain't he great? I like how he breaks down how people do stuff. Where you talk about Brian Cage lowering his hips to get more power on doing that kind of stuff. That's cool. That's that's stuff that I like to hear. You want to make wrestling believable? That's how you do it. Look at his muscles twitch. Look at him don't look at look at him doing that. He holds him extra long up in the air for a stalling suplex. Box. Yeah. Uh, next, Britt Baker. So she's in the Rolls Royce. It is now. It's got like a plexiglass shield. It's not quite around a the Pope bed mobile, of it. Is it? The Pope Mobile isn't the Pope Mobile like a, a a dome. Yeah, kind of. Didn't the Pope Mobile? Didn't the Pope Mobile? It wasn't a dome. It was kind of a dome. It, it was wasn't like a like tall dome. dome. It was a tall. Yeah, dome. Yeah, yeah, but it, was, it wasn't like a fully round roof. I think it was a little flatter than that. Um, it's kind of like somewhere between a dome and a rounded rectangle. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's been a variety of them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was a lot more uh, Bubble Boy than that. Okay. Mm-mm. yeah, I don't remember a Bubble Boy one. Uh, yeah, okay. So she's sending Tony notes throughout the show. Uh, this first one here is telling Tony that he is off friendship friendship timeout, even though Britt was in the dumpster for five or six hours last week. Um, after that, Hikaru Shida comes out for her match against Red Velvet. She's ringside. Her and Penelope Ford get into a bit of a, 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 an argument. Uh, Ford shoves her. And then Sheeta tries to hit her with the kendo stick, and the ref holds her back. That was pretty great. So Sheeta hits the ring, bell rings, running knee, falcon arrow, Sheeta wins. And she doesn't skip a beat. She just walks around, gets out of the ring, goes right after Penelope Ford. Meanwhile, uh, Caesar Bononi was uh, lingering. Yeah, he's in the background. The ringside. <laughs> he looked like he was in a good time. He was like, oh, what did I stumble into? Another wrestling show? Cool. He's Who would have thought he'd be... The, the the next Lex Luger. Yeah. He even had kind of a puffy looking shirt on, dude. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. So they break that up a little bit. And then uh Sheeta breaks free. She decks Kip Sabian. Yeah. Grabs Penelope forward, tosses her basically head first at the barricade. They're broken up again. Apparently Ricky Starks took took a spray a stray punch, according to Fifel Select. Go subscribe to them. Yeah. Um, so that's why he was holding his eye. Uh it was all pretty great. Yeah, it was good stuff. Sheeta's awesome. All right, man. Let's talk about this. Uh, all right, Cody press conference. What was Arn trying to say? I'm still trying to figure that all out. Like either Hager is stupid, dumb, or scared. Essentially, yeah, or scared. But he... man, he took the scenic route to that. <laughs> that is, that's exactly right. That was so the scenic route. There's like four minutes of rambling, and they get to the to the point, and I'm like, did I? Is he trying to say something more? Am I missing something? Well, yeah. You know, Co- Cody like, had Cody had that throbbing vein in his neck, and then it got got bigger and thicker. I was like, "What are you? What? Which vein are we talking about again here, Arn?" <laughs> like he was saying that Cody wasn't ready for Hager because he's trying to fire Co- Cody up. I don't. It, I don't know. Yeah, don't know. was Arn claiming that he was playing mind games? Because that just seems unlikely at this point. With to be his, honest with, with, with his client, I guess he should have talked about how he was chilling at the Waffle House. 
And it, 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 he had a revelation. He said, I've been spending less time studying uh, wrestling tape, more time studying this Waffle House menu. <laughs> exactly. Cody, Cody's going to dunk Hager in pain like I'm dunking these pancakes and some luscious maple syrup. Warm maple syrup. There's my So dog. anyways, after, after Aaron talked endlessly, apparently, uh, next question is for Cody. Um, and uh, he's asked how it feels to be the first TNT champ. He says it feels like hope. Uh, he says uh, hope, hope is also Ricky Starks, who uh, came to AEW and, again, mentioned that you know legitimately he had like $3 in his pocket and was living out of his car, even though I think that was years ago. Um, right. And then, uh, or at least prior to who was running NWA, uh, and then left Dynamite last night last week, sorry, with a job. Uh, he talks about taking wrestling very seriously because wrestling has seriously taken care of him. He starts talking about the TNT title, how important it is, especially given everything that's going on these days, I guess. Um, and he says, look at it. It's not even finished. The nickel plating's not on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But he's, he's trying to make it seem like this is a symbol for the times, essentially. Yeah. At least that's the vibe I got. Yeah. No, it kind of worked. Hey, uh, I'm plugging, plug in again. So, uh, so yeah, he's talking about the title and, uh, let me see. Let me bring up your notes here. What else did he say? Cause again, even Cody was, he was yeah, he was a bit rambling yeah. himself. And I didn't really take that, uh, uh, uh detail the notes because I was like, okay. no, no, that's fine. Like the next thing you have here is Hager and his wife show up and Hager just, they're just really in a rush. And so Hager's like, all right, you ready to do this? And he's like, yeah, he's like, cameraman. And then they do like a stare down photo op thing. And then Hager like puts his fist up against Cody's cheek and Cody kind of smiles and then he bats his hand away and then he sort of, you know, mad dogs. And then Dustin keeps on trying to get in the business too. And Cody's like, stop, stop. And then, uh, so he's like, everybody just chill out. And then he turns back around and Hager's wife throws some water in Cody's face. And then Dustin's like, get her out of here. And he's like, chill out. All right, that's it. Press conference over. Yeah, that's the final straw for Cody. I mean, if the point of this was to 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 provide more heat for this match, uh, I don't really think that was terribly accomplished. Very I'll much. be honest, like, I is is Jericho Orange Cassidy gonna main event Fighter Fest? Oh wait, wait, did, well they have the night. What the, which well, which night is that gonna be on? Two. So that's assuming night two. Mox Cage happens, that's be the main event. If not, then it probably will be Jericho uh, Orange Cassidy because uh, Cody and Hager's night one. Okay, that makes sense. If yeah. the if they listed the matches, you know, uh, in order, as they announced them, the, the main event of night one is going to be the tag title match. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Cody and uh, yeah, boy, that was a couple of big matches right there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. This was this was super corny, but yes. it, it was very Cody. And the thing is, it's hit or miss with him. It's like. You can call back to WCW NWA stuff, and sometimes it's pretty cool. Sometimes it is super cheesy because even back then it was super cheesy, and this was that. But he yes. seemed to be really reveling in it. But the thing is, like, I think if it was more focused, mm. it might have mm. come off better from the jump. Like the second I saw everybody standing there, oh, the setup awkward, was corny. I know it was, but it, it was it, corny. It, it, it felt like a, a situation where it was, it was set up in a corny fashion that it overstayed its welcome. Yeah, which just made you sit there and, and have to the set and the corniness of it. Yeah, right. As opposed to being really focused to the point, like if Arnda says, "Yeah, Hager is not here," so he's either too dumb to show up or or too scared. Next question for Cody: How does it feel to be a TNT champ? Feels great. This is hope, open channel, so on and so forth. For example, Ricky Starks, he got a job last week. Uh, have Hager interrupt that and then uh, do the water bit. Done. You're out in like three minutes. As you know, they should have done. This took. Do you remember those commercials for that? copy copy machine selling place here in in town that would run during king's games yeah they were called and they had like fake press conferences like for as part of their commercial yeah that's what this felt like felt like that it just felt like fake press conference because like well i mean it was 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 okay i'm sorry i'm sorry (laughs) you're right it was and it felt like it and i don't think it was supposed to feel like it no (laughs) <laughs> I mean, they're all fake fights too, but we don't say that. Uh, so after that, we had a tag match. Dark Order, uh, Dark Order is Mr. Brody Lee and potential recruit Colt Cabana yeah. versus uh, the new team. Well, new-ish, I guess. New to Dynamite, anyways. Uh, Joey yeah. Janela and Sonny Kiss. Yeah, they, they had, played that uh, video package that they had, they had aired on. It was like a truncated Twitter. version of it because the full oh, version was like four minutes long. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. 
Um, and so that, that, uh, uh, the fight sequence was, was really well done, at least in the one they showed on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dynamite. no, man. Like the yeah, the the, the fight sequences. Like, there was some stuff at the beginning, but uh, the fight sequence, like the the punch to the balls. Mm -hmm. And then Janela coming in. It was cool. I thought it was clever. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, that was really neat. Um, but ultimately, even though uh, Janela and Sonny Kiss got in a decent amount of offense, they had like a decent bit there. Uh, like Sonny Kiss took out uh, Brody Lee at one point uh, while Joey was trying to get the cover on uh, Cole Cabana. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end, this was more recruitment fodder for Mr. Brody Lee because for the first time, I guess, in, uh, uh, I don't think uh, Cole Cabana's had his hand raised, or at least he acted like he hasn't had his hand raised in eight. No, he started out undefeated. They made a and commentary said that he just run, he's run into a, a bit of a losing streak of late. How many matches had he had in AEW? God, time is flown, I guess. Well, not counting dark. I don't watch dark. I mean, I, well, I think he up. started once, once he lost his match in the TNT title tournament. I think, I don't think he's won since then. But oh, he had a couple okay. wins before that. Anyways, he was so shell shocked that he won. He kept on because, yeah, he was Brody Lee. Brody Lee hit, uh, his Janella? discus clothesline on Janela. Yeah, Janela. Yeah. Yeah. And then because Colt was a legal man, he said, here, go ahead. But I, I kind of feel like he was going to do that anyways. He said, here, go ahead and pin him. And then mm -hmm. Colt pinned him and they raised his hand and he kept on saying, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. So Colt's record, he's uh, four and five. Okay, all right. Well, five and five now. Sorry. Now five and five. Now he's a five hundred. Yeah, now. yeah. Oh, they. Oh, so that's. Uh, is this true? They call him Colt Forty Five in Dark Order. <laughs> oh, I thought he meant on on Dark. All right, this is a joke. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, so after that, it was a really fun match though. Uh, they had a, a a brief Sean Spears update. And it's basically just. Oh, the, wait, the, wait, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention this. Lance Archer comes oh, in sorry. and annihilates Sonny Kiss. And then he no sells Joey Janela throwing a chair at his head. And then he gives him a big boot. And then Jake the Snake's like, hey, calm down. Calm yep. down. All right. Yep. So the Sean Spears update is to finish to his match against Pineapple Pete on AEW Dark. Uh, where he's using the glove that Tully gave him, and I guess it's a loaded, a loaded glove. There's something in it. Don't know what it is. Something me metal, maybe. Who it's knows? Like, yeah, well, yeah. He clocks Pineapple Pete with the glove to get the win. Well, they showed it. It was like a little sliver of like. Yeah, it looked yeah. like kind of a rectangular piece of something. Yeah, at first I thought they said it was a. I forgot what they said. They but, tried to uh, make it make it sound like that, having that little piece of metal, whatever it, uh, it was, and there was like you know uh, having a roll of quarters in your hand when you punch somebody. I think yeah, that's the point they were trying to make. Dense, dense. Yeah, uh, I like that. I I I like it's smart of them to use stuff like the Joey Janela Sunny Kiss video, which you know they debuted on Twitter, mm -hmm. and that doesn't always guarantee it's going to end up on on the show. And then they're, you know, they're actually showing us stuff on Dark that we're going to need to know on Dynamite instead of us just mm -hmm. having to be like, hey, did they do something on Dark with this? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's cool. So the glove is great. Uh, after that, we had SCU versus FTR. Uh, this is great as FTR came to the ring in their Milner mobile, which will come into play later. Yeah. Uh, they passed by a, a Brit in her Pope mobile and... Uh, and they know seller and she gets mad about that. So she's been writing notes to Tony for him to broadcast mm -hmm. all night. Mm -hmm. That was, that was pretty damn funny. That was pretty, this is a fun match. Um, FTR, not surprisingly gets the win with good night express. Uh, afterwards they're dropping a promo. Well, Dax is, uh, he's, he's a pretty damn good talker. So he said, I, I didn't quite catch it. Did he say, did he say they're a welcome or an unwelcome addition to the tag roster? Oh, I didn't hear him. All right. It's one of the two. Yeah. Says there are good guys and bad guys in the world. And he says, we might just be a, a shade under 5'10", and we're not as athletic as JR would like us to be, but we're the baddest guys around. Uh, Dax talks to uh, Jurassic Express, Santana and Ortiz, uh, Kenny and Paige, and the Young Bucks. He congratulates them all for graduating uh, from the kitty table because the best tag team in the world is in AEW right now. You cut to the Butcher and the Blade and the Blade to the back of FTR's truck. Uh, uh, Butcher sitting there like Bob Falfa. Uh, Blade drops <laughs> Probo, produces a giant steel rod, yeah, and threatens to have the Butcher rip the truck in half. Meanwhile, the Lucha Brothers teleport behind FTR and they're just waiting for the turnaround. Mm -hmm. So Blade challenges 
uh, 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 FTR and Young Bucks to an eight-man tag match. Uh, it'll be the four of them against Butcher the Blade and Lucha Brothers. Uh, Lucha Brothers and FTR start brawling. Uh, eventually, Lucha Bros hit their finish on Cash Wheeler. Young Bucks run to the ring to make the save. Lucha Brothers run off, and then they and Butcher the Blade steal the truck. I liked later on how they kayfaved why it take, took people a long time to get to the ring because the locker rooms are in the football stadium, not in Daly's place. Oh, there you so go. So there's golf carts that people have to ride normally, I guess, to get from locker room to, to the, the stage area. Well, FTR, so I appreciate FTR has their Milner truck. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what's really sad about that match is that the bad guys are totally going to lose and they've got all the awesome teams. Like, I like the Young Bucks, don't get me wrong. I like FTR for the most part. But Butcher and the Blade and friggin' Lucha Brothers, holy crap. They're like, they honestly should be like vying for the tag titles at this point. They're I know. really good. I know. Although, I will say this I am glad that they didn't just feed Butcher and Blade to FTR in one match in their debut and then they're gone. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're yeah. actually getting a high profile match with them, even though they're totally going to lose and they really shouldn't because they're great. Yeah, it'll probably uh, it'll probably be either Butcher or Blade taking the loss in that one, though. I'd be really surprised if uh, either member of uh, Lucha Brothers eat the pin in that match. Yeah, I no, I yeah, yeah, I agree totally. Yeah. It's yeah. probably going to be uh, the Blade. Yeah, probably. Uh, after that, we had a really good um, best friends Omega and Page video package with uh, you know two interviews with each team. Uh, Kenny and, and Page are great together. Mm-hmm. Page kind of doing the the real mellow, straight face thing. Really good at that. Well, he was he was buzzed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he looked like he was just. Buzzed. He had that twenty yard stare going. He, there. Yeah, exactly. Great. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, 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 best friends were great. Uh, Trent cussed a little bit. Got beeped out. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really good. Really well put together. Yeah, it was. And it was uh, they, they had other little interview bits like with Jr. Jr. is questioning whether. Uh, Kenny and, and, and Paige had worked out their issues. And kind of the thing with them is like, uh, uh, you know, hey, we're really good friends. Or at least we're drinking buddies. And at the end, it was like, yeah, we may not be best friends. We may not be, be good friends, but we're like a damn good tag team, essentially. Mm-hmm. This is a good point here. Dang MQ says Fighter Fest Night 2 is taped next week. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing oh. that as well. Oh, that's right. Mm-mm. No mocks. If, if they, yeah, but dude. I wonder if they can call an audible and say, "Okay, we got to go live both weeks." If it if it means if it like they'd have to gamble. It's like, look, we definitely know we're not getting mocks next week, but we might be able to get them if we go live both nights. I wonder if they'd make that gamble. I don't know, man. Who's he fighting? Cage. That's yeah. such a non consequential match. They could have that at another freaking a. That could be a main event on Dynamite. They should yeah. put that on Dark. Have it be on. No, uh, have it be on. Uh, being the elite. Oh my gosh! In like uh, the Jacksons' backyard. Oh my goodness! Uh, After that, we Mox. had another Taz promo. Well, it was a, a, a Mox Brian Cage video package. Yeah, there was a lot of Taz talking, but yeah. Um, and then we saw Brian, it was Brian Cage versus Joe Cruz. Oh, that's right. I fast forwarded to the Taz. I did. I didn't even write because I wrote like very basic notes about shit that happened. Um, Brian C- the power so Brian Cage takes Joe Cruz to the outside and then power bombs him from the stage and back into the ring with ease. And he 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 launched him like fifty feet in the air. It was crazy. It the looked, the fall away looked, slam he did too earlier was crazy. Yeah. And he, he was yeah. curling the dude. He was curling he was him. Curling him. And it's not like this is a little tiny, you know, like Leon Ruff no. type guy. No, this guy was this, this guy, guy was, was like a normal sized guy. Yeah. And he was curling him like he was weighing he was weighed fifteen pounds. I like the part. I think it was he like gave him the fall away, and then the guy started crawling out of the ring, and he was like crawling away like it was a horror movie. And then yeah. Brian Cage just picked him up, did whatever power he wanted, back into the power ring. bomb. Yeah. So he hits drill claw for the win. Then Taz promo. So Steve, you took notes on this. What did he say? Uh, let's see here. Apparently, he's got uh, the philosophy of Vince McMahon because he called COVID a, be- a bullshit excuse. Not a good idea. He said, like, "You're sitting idea. at home with a bullshit excuse." Not, not the best way of framing that. It's a very deadly virus, there, Taz. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's my only note here. Yeah, uh, I, when he said that, I was like, "Oh gosh, Taz." <laughs> mm. 
No. <laughs> oh man. Like any other any other excuse, any other thing, if Mox isn't there, like it's totally fine to call it a BS excuse, but not not this. No. No, it's Especially not. because they referenced the crap out of it on TV, you know? Mm-hmm. So and JR uh, basically told he said, people, wear your masks. This you is know? he dude, he said, Man, he JR was getting super political tonight, man. I mean, for a wrestling show, he was saying, Yeah, dividing the country. <laughs> he said something about like the division in the country. He said he said the COVID was a nonpartisan. It was before it was before, oh, that. before that. Before yeah. that, he said something, and I think it was still related to the COVID stuff. And mm -hmm. that's when he circled back around to it. But he said something about like divisions in the country, and I was like, "Wow, you're sort of bringing me down, man. This is supposed to be my escape, Jr." <laughs> the same refrain we hear in our comments when we start talking politics. Um, but yeah, no, he said it's a it's a nonpartisan, nonpolitical issue. Wear your mask, folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said politics are dividing our country. Partisan politics destroying the country. Yeah, yeah. This is man. Uh, anyways, once Taz kind of uh, 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 trivialized, at least in the sense of the story they're trying to tell, uh, uh, COVID, I kind of uh, kind of zoned out a little bit because I was like, wow, that's a bad, that's a bad, t that's a bad take, Taz. Bad take. <laughs> um. Anyways, he was just trying to hype the match. Yeah. See if it even happens. Yeah. Uh, next, we had Brody Lee and Cole Cabana backstage. Cole's talking about how good it feels to win. Yeah, man. And Brody, Brody's like, yeah, winning feels good. We all suffer loss. But it's all about how you react to it. And Brody wants to show Colt again uh, how, what it feels like to win when they take on SCU at Fighter Fest. And Colt's like, SCU? Oh. He's super hesitant. <laughs> they're like friends. Yeah, they're friends. And Brody says, I'm going to bring my best man. That's you, Colt Cabana. I hope you bring your best men to SCU. So, and then, and in the very end, you see Colt's face, where like at first he's like sort of worried about it, and then he sort of gives a determined face, like, "Okay, I'm okay. I'm, we could do this." It took me all of three minutes, <laughs> and I'm good. I can do this. I want to win again. This guy was in WWE. Yeah. So uh, after that, Britt she sent a note to Tony. Wants him to read it on air. And it's a message for Big Swole. And this message reads, quote, I may have been a dumpster for nine to ten hours, but you're still the biggest piece of trash on the roster. Yeah. So uh, Swole walks up to Britt. She's banging on the pex uh, plexiglass. Uh, Britt's like, I can't hear you. This is soundproof. Uh, you can't get me. Uh, go steal someone else's star power. So... <laughs> Swole walks off, yeah. and Britt thinks she's safe. Little does she know that Swole has climbed up to the top of the field cart with a garbage can. Uh, she dumps the contents, contents of the garbage can onto Britt. Uh, meanwhile, I think uh, Rebel comes up with like a, a, a leaf blower or something to try to get. <laughs> she had a leaf blower. She was trying to blow it, and it didn't do anything. Oh, that was good stuff. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Britt Baker's on one leg. She's doing more than most people in wrestling. It's great. I know. I know. Uh, after that, we had uh, our main event match. It was Santana replacing, of course, Sammy Guevara against uh, Broken Matt Hardy. Neo One is there. He got in a shot, uh, a camera shot, that is. I thought uh, they were going to do more. That's why I made note of that. How it, cool! It up, how cool it is it for Santana it. to be in the ring with Matt Hardy? He's probably gonna that's going to be pretty cool, man. That right? You think it's going to be pretty cool? Maybe he doesn't like Matt Hardy. I don't know. I don't know. Probably pretty cool. Santana got to win sometime too. <laughs> it didn't happen yeah. tonight. No, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah, I wonder if they Impact. wish they would have stayed in uh, an Impact, dude. Probably they haven't really not. done. They haven't done a, a whole lot with these guys. Uh, they fit in so good with the inner circle, though. Oh, they do. They, they fit, fit in, in really so good. Well. They fit in really well in AEW as as a whole. But apart yeah. from like if the the Young Bucks feud, I felt like that could they could have done more with that. You know what they need. Either well, they wouldn't work for the trios title. They need like a mid card tag title. They need like a North American tag title. Somebody's getting Cody's ear. He's they did that in the NWA back in the day. Yeah, they did. They had basically a mid card tag title. Yeah, you got all these tag teams. I mean, that you're billing yourself as the tag team place to be. Mm -hmm. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the finish saw Santana jump off the top. Sorry, no, Santana hits like a running Mishinoku driver, covers, and then Hardy just kind of rolls him over to get the win. 
Ortiz hits the ring afterwards. He's beaten down Hardy with the sock. Uh, and then they hit Street Sweeper, Private Party run down to make the save. That's what they mentioned. Uh, or kayfabe. Why it take, takes people a long time to get from the locker room to the ring area because it's 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 a pretty long walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then our main event segment, Orange Cassidy and Jericho have a face-to-face. Uh, Jericho starts by asking or telling the old joke, why does the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? So he does this several times. He says mm-hmm. a joke that everyone knows, but after hearing it, you realize how dumb it is. And so is Orange Cassidy. He's the how did the chicken cross the road joke of wrestling. He says that Orange uh, wrestling style is an embarrassment to the business. And when he found out that he was joining AEW, he called Tony Kenny and the Young Bucks and asked why they signed him. And uh, their answer was, well, everybody loves him. And then Jericho kind of puts him over. He says, I applaud you, Orange Cassidy, for taking uh, the advice that Brian Pillman told me a long time ago, is that, which is to do something no one else has ever done before. Um, he says he's got himself over. But then he flips it, says the reason that it's happened is because he's a lot like the fans. He's lazy. He's a slacker. He doesn't have what it takes to make it to the top. And he broke out of his lane when he got in the face of Chris Jericho in that fighter fest. The Cassidy phenomenon comes to an end because he's going to make sure that Orange runs out of juice. And he was very tickled with himself yeah. with that particular punchline. Yeah, he loves the puns. So uh, Orange grabs the mic from him, acts like he's going to talk, puts it down, starts doing the shin kicks, puts his hands in his pockets. Uh, Jericho takes his glasses, crushes them, tosses the pieces at him, and then Orange takes him down with a double leg takedown, some ground and pound. They're brawling to the floor and then up to the stands. Uh, Jericho loves his camera cane, uh, cranes, hits Orange Cassidy with it, uh, gets up on a road case, picks him up for a body slam. Uh, Orange escapes that, slams Jericho's head into the, the handrails up in the stand several times, runs down the steps of the stands, Superman punch, sends Jericho through a table. And that's how the show ends. Yeah, he uh, sort of poses up on the on the little platform thing there, puts his, uh, finds, randomly sees some glasses there, puts them on. Oh, yeah. And uh, and he stands tall, so uh, so yeah, that was good stuff. Well, I had a friendo uh, uh, DM me just now, mm-hmm. Alejandro Gomez, and uh, he said, uh, "Which episode is it that you recently said to wear a mask?" My mother-in-law is trying to convince my wife not to wear it, and I just want to play that bit to make her feel better. Well, Alejandro, uh, consider this that bit because I don't remember yes. what that was. But just it, I feel like, like man, I feel like something that's been said. We said a lot. I know. I feel that's the thing. Also, I feel like we've said it a lot. Uh, I went to Winco today. Wore my mask. I like my Marvel yeah. mask. Lacey made me a Marvel mask. That's pretty and, cool. Uh, and I wear it wherever I go. And I noticed, uh, dude, it was at least at least ninety percent at Winco. Yeah. It was everybody. Yeah, I went so, to the store yesterday. Wore my mask too. It's a totally normal. I I consider necessary thing to do yes. to try to kill this thing, man. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Agreed. Anyway, agreed. So there's ne- your. It uh, is necessary. There's your. There's your. Uh, your endorsement, Alejandro. Yes, when answers the questions. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a, a question thread here on the Patreon. If you want to handle the Twitch, sure. One dollar a month, you can get on our question thread here on Patreon. First up. Adrian C. says, uh, is there another point in history when a wrestling federation has had as many great tag teams as one, at once as AEW has right now? He says the best he can come up with is when the WWE had the Hardys, Edge, and Christian, and the Dudleys back in the day. And, of course, more recently, New Day Revival and Usos. I'll say this. No company in history has ever treated, at least in modern days, has ever treated the tag team division like AEW treats theirs. Mm-hmm. I think that WWE has plenty of talent, but it's just a matter of like treating them like they are they mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Gareth Nicholas, did you hear JR's Kayfabe origin story for the Lumberjack match? I did not. I missed that. I missed that. I did say, I did hear uh at the beginning of the match Excalibur started talking about there who's trying to explain to the audience if they're new to AEW what a lumberjack mm-hmm. match is mm-hmm. and I'm sure it's probably right after that and I sort of tuned out so I didn't yeah it's probably cool though uh Asian Murr remember when Cesar Bononi was breakout star of the year in NXT I do he was yeah man that's like right before they probably started signing up everybody huh that's funny 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, Thomas Dunnigan. Do you think AEW could introduce breaks like NFL during season runs of Dynamite to add in another different element to WWE? Or would that be oh, asking like a bye week much, essentially? Too much, or would that be asking too much of TNT since the network loves themselves some AEW Dynamite? Well, I, I mean, don't know. Such... I don't know what he means by breaks, but they're not going to go off the air for six months. That's for sure. I mean, if they're going to, if if it's breaks for the show, no. If it's breaks for wrestlers, off season, by weeks, if you will, by periods. I don't know how long. It'd probably be longer than a week. Um, I think that'd be a great idea. I would not. I would think that they would probably be open to that as well. Yeah, I would imagine if anybody came to them and said, "Hey, I'm feeling kind of burnt out," they'd probably say, "Okay, go home." Yep. Yep. Uh, War Machine MJ says, in your or asks, in your opinion, who is having more fun in their careers at this point, Chris Jericho or Daniel Bryan? I'm thinking Daniel Bryan because it was taken away from him for three years yeah. and he did not think yeah. he'd come back. Dr. Steve Winters, Moth could be out a month because he'd have to wait over two weeks after Renee stopped showing symptoms. That's true because uh, depending how long, uh, well, yeah, depending how long uh, she's contagious, I don't know. Would it matter know. if he quarantined himself away from yeah, her? Yeah, maybe. But it would still be two weeks from the day he quarantined himself. Yeah, right. So yeah. if he started, if he like started quarantining. As soon as the positive test results came in, if he quarantined himself, then it'd be two weeks. Man. Gareth Nicholas, it was kind of weird that he called it a BS excuse. Yeah, Taz, when commentary is going on about how they, they are treating this seriously. Like, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a bad bad take. Well, um, I don't know. I wouldn't. I'm, I didn't. I understand it's wrestling. It's part of a storyline. Yeah, it's still. part of a story. He's a bad guy. It's what he does. Yeah. It's really not that big of a deal. I, just, I mean, I thought it was funny. I was like, oh, that's kind of silly. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Scotty Sparks, are you doing predictions for Fighter Fest? It's essentially a free pay per view because of COVID. Hypothetically, if you are, oh, hypothetically, if you are, who's the biggest points lock pick, and why is it Hikaru Shida? Oh yeah, Shida's totally retaining that title. I mean, look, what's a? Well, Moxley isn't even a big lock right now because we don't even know if he's going to have the match. So yeah, it, it might very well be Shida. I mean, Cody's not losing to Hager, either. But well, Lance Archer's not losing to Joey Janela. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but of all those, okay, so you, I guess the biggest confidence goes to number one: the biggest discrepancy in sort of the nebulous power rankings. Like Penelope Ford is not going to be women's champion right now. Hikaru Shida is pretty high up there. She's 11 and one this year. Mm -hmm. um, conversely, Jake Hager is booked pretty damn strong. Yeah. He's not going to win, no. but they could. And it wouldn't, and it would, it would be like, okay, well, yeah, I could see how that makes sense. It's Jake Hager. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. that could make sense. Joey Janela and Lance Archer might be the biggest discrepancy power wise. Maybe, maybe, but then you bring Sonny kiss in the equation and maybe, uh, die Hard Homer, who gets kicked out of the inner circle first? Uh, if you'd asked me this question last week, I'd probably say Sammy Guevara. Well, you were right about that, Larson. Um, but uh, wouldn't it I be? Uh, no, it wouldn't be that. What are you gonna do? Face turn Hager? You could face turn LAX, maybe. But Ortiz yeah. is booked as crazy guy, so I don't know that it's gonna work. Uh, let's see. Oh, it kind of seemed like they were planning some sort of uh, laying the groundwork for some sort of thing because Matt Hardy was kind of getting into Sammy's, you know. Uh, oh head no, a you were bit. right about Sammy. You're right Sammy about Sammy. Sammy would been the one that would have turned face and left the group, but yeah, hundred percent. Um, uh, Flats asks if if AEW is like New Japan and Mox has to vacate the title, so we can't have the match at Fighter Fest. Uh, who faces Cage at Fighter Fest night two? I don't think they're going to have Mox vacate because he can't defend it. But let's let's for the sake of discussion say they do. Okay. 
say uh, Mox is unable to defend the title. Um, we're going to have a match. I guess it'd have to be whoever's number one, who's ranked number one in the power rankings. Isn't everybody in the power rankings either a champion of some sort or? Let me see. Let me see MJF. Isn't yeah, MJF like MJF. top of the I rankings? Think, yeah. I think he might be MJ. MJF might be number one. Yeah, it could be MJF. So, sorry, Cody's. Oh, no. Yeah, MJF's number one is MJF, Brian Cage, Lance Archer, Brody Lee, and Jericho. Mm-hmm. So it'd be MJF. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nathaniel Spencer, what are some dream matches we have yet to see in each division in AEW? Have we seen Mox versus Cody yet? We haven't seen that. They've both been faces. I don't believe so. We've seen Mox versus Jer- Jericho. Yeah. Jericho. Yeah. We saw that in AEW. We saw that. Yeah, for the championship. Yeah, I saw he won the title. We've, We've seen had Mox and Kenny. Yeah. We had Mox and and Penta. No, I don't think so. I want that no, one. That's no. the one I want. That's the one I want. Uh, White Brian 92, who in AEW needs a repackage or new entrance theme? Basically, everybody, save for Paige, best friends, maybe a couple of other people need, need new entrance themes. Or yeah. could stand to have new entrance themes. I don't think anybody's music is so awful that they Across desperately the need one. Across the but board. But I just feel like not, most of them are fairly nondescript. Across the board. Joe Juarez, should Orange Cassidy and Jericho be a cinematic match? Or. Yeah, that'd be rad. We'll do it Wait, like Stadium one? Stampede. Jericho, Orange Cassidy. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. You could do some silly pratfalls. Uh, fear and loathing. If the WWE has to shut down, can we expect an increase in unsolved mysteries watch-alongs? No, because they took it off Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime. Yep. Yep. Don't know what I'm going to do about that. Don't know what I'm going to do about that. Life sucks. Uh, this is an interesting question from Morpid Ravioli. Man, it's 2020. They take off Unsolved Mysteries off Amazon Prime, so I can't do my watch party. Like anymore. a month and a half after you do watch, start doing watch parties. Just absolutely. Yeah, Isn't that I know. Just, now, ooh. yeah, we're breaking it to people here now, man. Uh, Morpid Ravioli, should AEW take pride in the fact? This is kind of a spoiler for NXT, a modest one. Do you want to hear it? Have for you heard NXT? It? Uh, I've seen a Some lot of counter programming. Oh yeah, Bash of the Beach, right? Great American Bash. Great so American. Doing a two-week two Great American Bash event uh, might hurt Fighter Fest ratings, but in the long run, it's a better look for them. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how I feel about NXT doing like most obvious counter programming imaginable. Uh, just kind of do your own thing, man. You know. Oh wait a second. Oh whoa 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 whoa. whoa. What? What? It says Prime Video. Now it says it's oh. back. Oh, cool. It wasn't here before. It wasn't here like two days ago. It says included with your IMDb TV subscription. Okay, but the question is, can I do a watch party? Yeah, that I is I won't know that until we're... Wait a second. Actually, I can sort of start to look at it. All right, what's the next question? I think I'm done with Patreon questions. Oh, okay. Call me Aurelius. Says, Steve, new episodes are coming to Netflix. Is that a uh, fictionalized Unsolved Mysteries, or is that a, a, a relaunch of the show as it existed? Well, it ain't with Robert Stack, so Obviously. I don't care. All right, all right. I had so many people sending me the link. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate it. But it's not the same thing. Yeah, looks like they took it off watch parties at least. So Trapped. I think that because it's on IMDb, it's not going to be on like proper prime. That sucks. That's a bummer, man. That is balls. I got to figure something out, man. Uh, Dang MQ brings up a point here. Essentially that uh, Brit and Swole are in relationships with WWE talents. Yeah, I know. Um, Adam Cole obviously has been at the Port Center. Uh, for a while during this period, um, uh, is 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 that all going to be potentially interrupted? I don't know. It was live tonight, so mm-hmm. I, I part of me wonders if that was the the. I mean, I know that like story wise, the plexiglass like made sense totally, but part of me was thinking, is this because of of Adam Cole, like? Is this like they sort of like, hey, this is going to be an issue. But then I they, I would think they'd just been like, hey, don't come here. Well, also the news broke of all that at like 3 o'clock our time. It was a couple hours before they went live. Okay. 
Yeah. So I'm just saying, I don't know if they'd have time to put a bunch of plexiglass on the field cart. Uh, yeah, I you have know, no idea. In response to that. I have no idea. I don't know. I mean, it's a valid... Well, hold on a second. Isn't... Uh... Wait, isn't NXT... Isn't that a full sale? Or is that at the Performance Center? I thought they did that at full sale. Last time, it was at full sale. Yeah. And What's this it? week's was taped. Yeah, it was taped the la- they taped it last week, I believe. Look, I-, I would just put I would put it this way. I would assume that AEW has thought about this, they've inquired about this, and they've probably determined that she's in the clear for her to be there. It is a it is a valid thing to wonder yeah. about. Yeah. Absolutely. I would just think that like they've been very careful with this stuff. I doubt they're gonna. I doubt they're gonna slip up on this one when it seems really yeah. obvious. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's saying it's a full sale. That's what I thought. Okay. Well, hopefully, I, mean, I guess the 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 one concern would be at least potentially is 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 there any crossover in terms of the crew working the show? Isn't the cr- I mean, isn't the crowd at full sale the same crowd that's at the performance center though? I thought so. I like it's just the PC guys, the PC recruits. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be honest, like, it, you would think, like, dude, number one, none of those people are six feet apart from each other, like, in terms yeah. of a chain of people, yeah. you know, like, they're all yeah. next to each other, and yeah. they're all encased, and, like, the first reports that we got from Fightful Select was, like, what was it, there wasn't even air conditioning, or it was, like, I don't know, it was something weird? Not a not a ventilation in, in the in the space, yeah. Yeah. It's a mess, man. It's, it's... Ugh. Yep. Anyways, it's a mess. That's it for the show. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Oh, Twitch chat, stay tuned. We'll uh, oh. do a raid. Sure. <laughs>